Hey everybody, this is Tammy with Your Naked Journey. And this is my first professional video uh, for my business. I'm really excited about it. So a little nervous, so we're gonna see if we can get through this. I help professional, uh, successful women who are 40 and above, who are feeling unfulfilled, lost, and kind of searching for the uh, their current meaning in life. I help them rediscover their purpose, reignite their passion so that they can live their exceptional life. So what I wanted to do today was just to introduce myself and to talk a little bit about um, my journey um, and how um, I'm here to support each of you. So again, my name is Tammy. I'm 51 years old. I am a mental health therapist. I have been for over 20 years. Um, so my story starts with living the warrior life is what I call it. So I has, I was, I was just incredibly, uh, fortunate to be raised in an incredibly supportive uh, family environment where my mother and my father taught me from a very young age that you can be anything that you want to be. You can be anybody who you want to be. However, don't do anything half-assed. Do it 100% all the way or just don't do it. So that has been uh, the philosophy in my life for most of our life, um, which I think had a lot to do with the successes that I found. So from my early age, um, I participated in multiple sports. That was a big thing in our family. So I was a swimmer. That was my primary sport. I swam from the age of six uh, through uh, 18. I um, also played multiple other sports throughout my, my um, childhood. Um, my theory in life is if you weren't going to win, you weren't going to be the best, then mm, no reason doing it. I was able to uh, do letter in seven sports. Um, so pretty much was able to put my mind to being the best and I uh, was pretty successful in that area. Um, also was a very good student. Um, I was able to graduate high school with honors. Um, that's why I lettered in seven sports in high school and also did a lot of extracurricular activity. Um, from about the age of eight or nine or so, I decided I wanted to be a psychologist. I first wanted to be a teacher and I thought that was kind of cool until I found out teachers didn't make too much money. Teachers are wonderful, 100%. I think it just wasn't in my cards. So I decided I wanted to be a psychologist. I wanted to help people and I wanted to change the world. That was my purpose. That was the thing that I was put on this earth for and that is what I needed to do. So I went about that goal with a single-minded single purpose. Um, Every sport that I did, every curricular activity that I did, all my volunteers, uh, hours that I did, all of the uh, sororities and business associations I was involved with, the uh, um, it, it didn't matter what it was. It was all geared towards um, being able to get into college and doing the career that I wanted. So. I was successful. I graduated, like I said, from high school with honors and I got accepted to a couple different colleges. I ended up choosing Florida State uh, University, Go Seminoles. That was uh, a family school. My grandmother went there, my dad went there, um, and I was incredibly fortunate to be able to go there. Well, Florida State was actually the first time in my life where I experienced a failure. I um, did not do very well at Florida State. I ended up getting in a sorority pretty early um, while I was there. Spent way too much time at uh, sorority parties and front parties and not going to class. Um, I was very, very regimented in high school. I was very set on what I wanted to do. I knew what I had to accomplish. My family was very encouraging, but also kind of made sure that I toe the line. So at Florida State, um, I was in a dorm. I could go to school. I didn't have to go to school. Um, and for once in my life, I was pretty free to kind of do whatever I wanted to do. So made some poor choices. And after about a year and a half, Florida State um, respectfully asked me to leave. I think I was a 0.7 um, GPA. I think I might have made that GPA look a little bit better than it, it really is, but you know, that's kind of where we were. So I came back home, tail between my legs. Um, I was supposed to go to Florida State and get my PhD in psychology. That was the plan, that was the goal. That's everything that was supposed to happen. Um, Ended up having to come back and move in with uh, my dad and 
um, kind of was lost for a little bit six eight months or so trying to figure out like what is going on so we're actually with my dad in an office which was horrible and just said you know what uh, just because my path changed uh, doesn't mean that my goals need to change so I got back on the horse again um, enrolled in a local community college what I didn't mention in all of this is that I met my um, husband-to-be um, and got married during my first semester of community college and gave birth to my first daughter uh, this second semester of community college. I have three beautiful babies, uh, three beautiful daughters in three and a half years, kind of busy. Um, was able to uh, transition from the community college to our local uh, college here in Jacksonville, Florida, by the way, which is where I was born and have spent most of my life, which is where I am now making the video. Um, so University of North Florida is where I graduated from. Um, I had given birth to my third daughter um, in January, graduated that December in 1993. My daughter was born with some pretty severe birth defects and was in the neonatal unit for a little over a month. So she went to school with me for the next year, um, went with me on my uh, chest for a while, went with me on my back when she got a little bit older, got a special permission from the school. Um, so that was really kind of cool because she was in and out of the hospital several times, so I didn't feel safe leaving her with anybody else. I was very fortunate that my community kind of backed me. So I graduated in December 1993 with um, honors. Um, I think I graduated cum laude at that point in time after having my three children and got accepted to the University of Florida um, for any of you who follow, follow college football, um, and I'm a, just a nut for college football, that, that was tough, that was tough, but it was within travel distance from my home at the time. So I commuted for nine months to the University of Florida to get a couple graduate degrees um, in mental health counseling so that I could go ahead and start uh, my psychology my psychology career. My goal was to eventually get my PhD, but this was kind of the step in that I needed to be able to do because I really stink at like the GRE and uh, my ADHD just kind of gets in the way. So that's what we did. So nine months after commuting, I decided with my husband at the time that we were going to move to the University of Florida. So here I am with three young children. My youngest is year and a half I think by now and my oldest was four we owned a house we owned a couple cars my husband was working I was working part-time going to school and I really felt that I needed to go all in that there were too much distractions it was too difficult that I had a goal that I wanted to accomplish and that I breathed it, this wasn't an option for me there was no plan b it was plan A 100% of the way. Tony Robbins kind of talks about making uh, massive action immediately. I did massive action all the freaking time. So we rented the house out, got rid of one car, kept the other, um, packed up the babies, um, left most of our furniture, uh, took a little bit that we had, and we lived in an 800 square foot concrete apartment at the University of Florida graduate student housing for the next two years. Um, we lived on student loans. We lived on Medicaid. Uh, we did food stamps. We did whatever it took so that we could be parents to our children and that we could uh, go to school and meet our goals. My, my husband at that point in time had started to go to school at the beginning, got his AA degree. I was able to get um, a couple graduate degrees during that time period. So um, that was really cool. So I graduated in 1996 and for any of you college football fans, I graduated the same day Emmett Smith graduated because he left the Dallas Cowboys, came back to the University of Florida um, and graduated with his bachelor's degree the same day that I graduated. So pretty cool because like all of the uh, news trucks were there. Of course for me, but you know, it was kind of nice that he was there in the background. So that was really neat. So I graduated uh, summa cum laude from, summa cum laude from um, uh, the University of Florida. 
and we then packed all of the kids up and moved back home uh, to the Jacksonville area. I was living large. I loved every minute of my day. I think back and now it was my most favorite time ever. Every day was passionate. Every day was full of purpose and fulfillment. It was such an exciting time. So we moved back, had the babies, kind of had to get everything settled in. I started working approximately four years after I started working in kind of the psychology field. I had this opportunity to become a CEO of our local foster care agency here in Jacksonville. I never run anything. Um, I had done pretty much private practice for a little bit. Um, I had worked in some substance abuse, you know, views in the mental health field, kind of how that goes. But I had this really unique opportunity, very small foster care agency, I'm part of kind of privatization of what was going on at the time, and was given this offer. I remember that night, I remember that night just sitting there and just, I couldn't sleep all night. I was like, there's no way I can do this. Um, I think at this point in time, I was about 31 years old. Um, I, I didn't graduate till I was 26, the graduate program because of, you know, life. Um, but I met my goals, that's what the plan was. And so I remember just staying up all night going, there's no way I can do this. Like, you know, I didn't have like an imposter syndrome necessarily, but I was like, I've just never done this before. And all I kept thinking to myself was like, damn, you got this girl. Like, you know, there is nothing that you can't do that you have learned that throughout your life. You know, that if you don't know it, you'll learn it, you know, and you will make it happen. So next morning I was off for the job. It was like fantastic. I worked in that job for about five years. Um, absolutely 100% my purpose in life. It was, it completely fulfilled everything that I had. Not only did I enjoy being a boss, because that was like really freaking cool. I was like, you know, boss lady, like really cool. Um, I really became a good leader. I grew personally and professionally in that job. There was so much that I learned. I became an expert in policies and procedures, budgeting, finance. Uh, really excelled at systems management, systems leadership, change leadership. The organization I worked for grew 550% in five years. And so that was like really cool. And we did such good work and it was so freaking awesome. Um, so I would have to say that up until I was about uh, 36, pretty much I lived my exceptional life. I, I lived a life um, others would envy. I lived a life that uh, I got up every single morning and couldn't wait to face the day. I got up and I had three beautiful children. I had this marriage that I had been in for a long time. I had uh, my family who all lived in town and I made a freaking difference. My purpose in life was to change the world. In therapy, it was one person at a time. In the foster care agency, I could change families. I could change children. I worked in changing the community. That was awesome. Then the bottom fell out. That's what I call it, the bottom falling out. Um, there were some personal things that were going on with my uh, husband at that time. And there was an arrest that became public that caused me within three to four months to lose that job. No fault of mine. Um, unfortunately, it happens when you're in a high profile um, job and a high profile career. Um, even though nothing came of the arrest and the charges, um, it was enough uh, for me to lose that job. So. I actually traveled the country for about six months looking for other CEO jobs, looking for other leadership jobs, kind of in the same arena. Unfortunately, at that point in time, if you remember correctly, in 1996, around 94, 95, 96 is when uh, the internet came out. So, you know, eight years, nine years, 10 years after that, all you had to do was Google my name. That wasn't good, you know, Google my name. So they found me in New Jersey, found out in Colorado, they found out in Oklahoma, they found out in the Carolinas. So it was obvious at a point in time that, that I was not gonna be able to continue on that uh, particular career track that I uh, was going. And I think that was when um, there was a little piece of me that gave up, that, um, 
couldn't be superwoman anymore. But I had a family to take care of. I had things I had to do. So for a few years, I made still relatively good money. I was making triple figures at the time that I lost my job. I was still making, you know, six, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year. I had a degree behind me, I have a license behind me. I have all the things that matter, you know, in psychology to be able to make money. So I just worked job to job. I just did what I needed to do to take care of my family. I did what I needed to do to freaking pay the bills. Um, during this time, my children all were growing. Um, they all started leaving the house. Um, I did lose my home um, during, after the termination. Um, it was also during the crash, um, which was obviously, you know, a problem with the economy as well. And that whole 2008, 2010 time. So, um, even though I was making, you know, kind of close to what I was before, the things just kind of didn't go well. Things weren't going well um, in a lot of areas of my life. But I kept it together. I kept it together. I was uh, the primary breadwinner in my family. Um, without me, there really, you know, wasn't anything. And it wasn't fair to my children to have to change their lifestyle or to go without um, because of the choices you know, that my husband made or my choice to stay with my husband at that point in time or anything that we were kind of going through. They had a hard enough time because their friends knew and it really just was not a good situation. So I kind of just did my jobs. I kind of did my jobs. I did here, I did there. I found kind of like one job I really liked, you know, kind of stayed there for a little bit, but it was not satisfactory. So kind of moved on to the next one. I was kind of there for about a year and then I could make more money over here. So I kind of did that. Um, and I wouldn't say I became depressed because that's definitely not kind of in, within my, my real house necessarily, but I became complacent. I, everything, as long as I had a job and I could make my bills, everything was fine. It was like, you know, kind of, you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I was kind of back in that kind of survival context of kind of looking at things instead of in the, um, you know, purpose context, which I had lived most of my life. And what was kind of funny is I didn't realize I had made that transition. I didn't know that I was moving from this um, um, thriving, purpose-filled life with just complete fulfillment into, because it, it, it was a rapid drop at first, but then it was just like, okay, you gotta be in survival mode, you gotta be in survival mode, you gotta make this happen, you gotta make this happen, can very task-oriented, okay, you gotta do this, and we have to move here, and you have to have this job. So as long as you're doing that, you kind of keep the wheels spinning, kind of keep the wheels on the car and you really kind of don't care where the car is pointed as long as it's kind of still moving, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so all my babies left, um, all my girls, um, which I'm very proud to say my oldest is going to be uh, 30. Um, my middle child is 28 and my baby is 27. Um, at least my I'll just want to be 30 in May, so 29, 28, 27, so yeah. Um, and um, then my oldest daughter had a grand daughter, which love of my life, um, who kind of moved in and out of my house with my husband, but it was really freaking cool because even though I did not have any empty nest issues, I had prepared for that as obviously kind of a psychologist. I was like, okay, we gotta kind of deal with this. Um, it was really cool because I could kind of focus my attention on somebody else. I could help somebody else. I could be there for somebody else. And that way I didn't have to worry about me. I didn't have to think about this really isn't kind of cool and I'm not enjoying this much, but hey, I really like the baby and the baby's here and all this was really freaking cool. And you know, and helping my daughter kind of navigate uh, single parenthood and what all that meant. So that kind of took up some of my time for, for about a year, maybe a year and a half or so. That kind of took up some of my time. Um, and then she was able to kind of get on her feet for a little bit, which was great. I mean, that's, that's what you want. And, you know, I, I, I try to think back if there's like this one moment that kind of happened. Um, and I don't think there was one moment. I think there was accumulation of moments during this last of all of this kind of crap that happened. Um, my relationship with my husband at the time really started to disintegrate. Um, however, my job is to keep homeostasis. My job is to keep everything okay. My job is to make everybody happy. My job is to be a freaking success. 
You succeed in everything in life or you don't do it. That's how this works. I don't have a fear of failure. I don't have a fear of success. I failed several times in my life and in my businesses and those kind of things. Fear of uh, failure is an opportunity to learn. But you don't fail like that when that's your job. So, kept the marriage together for 28 years. 28 years. Knew it was over for at least seven, and it probably should have been over 10 years prior to that. There was an accumulation, I think, of things. I think it had to do with kind of some job things. I think it had to do with some kind of relationship things. I started to realize that I was no longer living my real life. I was no longer the driving force behind what happened to me. I had become complacent. I could make this happen. I could be in a shitty relationship. I could be in a crappy job you know that i don't like i could still pay the bills i had the house i had the cars i had everything that i needed i had food in the town none of those I, I, I you know all my survival needs were met i mean there were there was no question my job i had been in my job for a couple years and i was kind of like you know what i'll just retire here you know i'm only 48 but hell you know i can do this because all i have to do is push these papers around do this it's kind of easy it was a little bit fulfilling i'd say maybe 10 percent fulfilling but really, it just kind of got to the place where it's like, cool, this is kind of my place. This is where I'm going to land. And I really, really freaking sucked. Um, it's tough, you know, to kind of like, and it's not like a giving up. It's just kind of like a giving in, you know, it's like, I was a warrior for all my life and I was so driven and passionate. And then to sit there and realize that you're just going to kind of go with the flow for the few years you have left. It's stupid. It makes no sense, you know. So I'm very fortunate. I woke up. I have a wonderful family, wonderful support system. I realized I wanted more. I, like, I would wake up with these questions like, what in the world? Why am I feeling this way? I have everything that I need. I'm a success. I have wonderful children. I've got these beautiful two grandbabies at the time. I, I've, been, I've been married forever. I have this kind of really cool job making clothes for you know triple figures. I mean, like, seriously? I mean, like, but I was not fulfilled. I had no purpose. I had nothing. I was just making it. So I decided it was time for a change. And being who I am, um, I'm a risk taker. It's what I love about kind of who I am as a person. I decided that in order to make the changes that I needed to make to live the exceptional life that I had left, that I had to live, leave my relationship. It was, it was toxic and it was just poison at that point in time. So I walked out of a 30-year uh, relationship. We were married for a little over 28 years. Um, I um, packed my stuff, left everything behind, took my dogs. Um, I have two bull mastiffs. I did have two bull mastiffs. One passed, unfortunately, on another one. Who I'll start sharing um, the pictures of. And... I left and um, that was the beginning. That was the beginning. I needed to make a break. I needed to, not everybody has to do that. This is, I'm not, I'm not saying that. But I think when we realize that there needs to be change, we have to take massive action immediately. We cannot sit around because if you're anything like me, you are an intellectual. You can rationalize anything to death and you can have the whole paralysis by analysis and you can flip it and just be in your head so much thinking you're doing the right thing when you know in your heart and your soul that it's not. So I had to go. Like the decision was made one day, two days later, I was out. So that started my journey. That started uh, my naked journey. And just to kind of let you know why the name is that way, I just want to share this for a minute. So a naked journey is a journey where you have to be granularly honest and genuine and vulnerable because there's a lot of shit that goes on in here, heart, in your mind, in your belief systems, and in your thoughts. So when you decide, I'm not living my purpose anymore, I am not fulfilled, I have got to make this change. That's a drastic change. That is a significant change. And it is going to be a hard change. And that means that you have 
have to be willing to strip away all the defenses, all the barriers you put up for yourself, and truly, truly look at you the way that you are. Us women know being naked, tough, right? Because we always see all of our faults. We can see the one thing that the guys will never see in a million years, but that's what we have to do. Strip bare, be honest, know who we are. So, the next uh, video that I do, we'll talk a little bit more about that and how I kind of went through that process, but I just want to give you an update about where I am right now. So, um, gosh, we're, what, four years out from that decision, I guess? I have my, my time right now, three years, I don't know. Um, uh, I am in a, uh, so we'll kind of talk about, I believe there's six pillars of health, and so we'll kind of get into that as well. Um, I am in uh, an incredibly um, supportive, sometimes challenging um, relationship with a man who pushes me every single day um, to live my passions, to find out how I can live life for me. I think he recognizes I have lived my life for other people for such a long time, whether it was society or my career or my family or my children or my ex-husband or whoever, I had my goals that I really freaking nailed. Then I turned it over to everybody else. And so we'll talk more about that. Um, I am still at the same job, which is really cool for six years. However, I have started this business um, because um, I have made the decision that I want uh, my, my passion in life now, uh, my purpose in life and the things that kind of fulfill me is um, I have lived in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, let's see, let's see, I'm 51, about to be 52. So I've lived here for 49 of my years. I was just college um, at a short little stint in St. Petersburg. Um, I want to experience the world. I want to travel. Uh, not just to travel to see, but travel to experience and travel to know other cultures. Um, and I want to be able to, to share my very particular perspective um, with other people. I want to help other women get out of their way so that they can learn how to live that life that they wake up every morning just exhilarated and full of wonder and promise and passion. Just uh, that's what I want. So uh, with that being said, um, my uh, boyfriend and I are moving to Greece in October of 2019. Um, big change, big change. Um, never been like, you know, ever lived out of Florida. So uh, moving to Greece, but I am one that I'm very comfortable. I am, um, I can do this. I can do this forever. I can be here. I can go into private practice. I can retire here. I can have the house and the cars and have all of the trappings of whatever everybody else says success is, but that is no longer my definition of success. I have moved past that. And my definition of success um, has a lot more to do with the experiences um, um, that I have never experienced before. Um, so that's what we're planning on doing. So what I'm hoping uh, to kind of do here with um, these videos is to kind of, um, this is my naked journey, um, and to share that, uh, share my successes and my challenges, my failures, my um, everything that kind of goes on. Um, my naked journey is a journey towards Greece, so that's what we're going to kind of do. Um, but I'm here to hopefully inspire other women. I am giving up everything. My family is here, my children, my grandchildren are here. Anything I own is here. Um, everything I know is here. Everything I understand, the world perspective that I own is here. And um, I'm willing to sacrifice all of that to follow my dream. Um, so that I can wake up again every single morning um, and just be happy to be alive and be excited about the moments that this day is gonna bring and look forward to the tomorrows and look forward to the moments and live, live in the moment. It's been a while, it's been a while, so I'm really looking forward to it. And thank you very much for sharing this moment with me. Uh, check me out on uh, Instagram. Um, at Your Naked Journey on Facebook, obviously Your Naked Journey. Um, those are my two main areas right now as far as just starting YouTube as well. So um, 
If you like this video, I would love for you to push like, and if you have any comments, I think that would be really awesome. I'm looking for my tribe of super women um, who are wanting to reconnect um, with that badass that ruled the world before. So hope to see you later. Bye.